Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. How many of you know that the Lord is good all the time, saints of God? Lord, you are good all the time. Welcome to today's Seed Time and House broadcast, our special 2017 Harvest broadcast. And we're so blessed to have this opportunity to come and speak life to you as we transition out of a calendar year into a new calendar year. Somebody said the Lord is good all the time. Hallelujah, saints of God. And so this is the year of 2017 that we're approaching, and we thank God for this year of 2016, which has been a wonderful year of the pinnacle of success in life, business, and relationship. And we thank God for that. Every seed that has been sown in this year will reap a harvest in this next year. So 2017, we declare to be the year of our harvest. Hallelujah. Someone say with me, 2017 is the year of my harvest. Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty. And so we pray that you really enjoy the wonderful worship and praise time that we have because we usher in the presence of God through our worship, through our praise. For God inhabits the praises of his people. Somebody give God a great big hallelujah right now. Say, God, you are good. God, you are good all the time. And so we're going to be talking today about the Lord of the harvest, that this is the year of our harvest and that we shall reap a harvest in this season. Somebody said the Lord of the harvest. And so if you have your Bible and paper and pencils, we're going to use as a foundational text, Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. And we're also going to have a follow-up scripture that's going to deal with the fact that he is Lord of the harvest from the book of John. And so I want you to go ahead and get your Bible, paper and pencils out now that you will be prepared to take notes, study along with us. I always encourage you, saints of God, to do this because I want you to be able to search the scriptures right along with us to see whether the things that we say are so or not. So here are the two texts that we're going to be using today. One is Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, and the second one will be Matthew chapter 9, verse 38. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2017 is our year, is the year of our harvest. And we're going to understand what harvest it is that we should desire to reap in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Yes, if we do the things that please God, you'll find that God does the things that please us. And so it's very important and relevant that we be able to grasp the, the words that the Lord is saying to us today. So let's go ahead and start with that first text from Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. And I'm going to look at several different versions today, but let's start off with the King James Version. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23 reads, But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let's take a look at the second portion of scripture from Matthew 9 and 38, where it reads thus Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field the year of our harvest. Let us pray. Father, we come before your presence this day singing praises and describing glory and honor and wealth and riches unto you. Today, O oh God, as we recognize your sovereignty, your dominion and your power, on this day, at this time, at this hour, O oh God, where we, we submit ourselves and surrender ourselves, our hearts and minds and souls unto you afresh today. Father, we look to you for you are the Lord of the harvest. That means you are the ruler of the harvest. You are sovereign of the harvest. You are the harvest maker. And we thank you today. We praise you, we exalt you, we glorify and magnify you. May you be exalted this day, O oh God. May we lift up our voices with a voice of triumph as we declare that you are Lord. You are Lord of the harvest. And we worship you and we praise you. 
In Jesus' matchless name, hallelujah, 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 and amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say with me, harvest. Yes, today we're going to be talking with you a message of transition as we approach this new year of 2017. The Lord has pressed upon my spirit over the last several weeks and months a, a, a word from the Lord. And it goes right in line with our first foundational text that I shared with you earlier, which came from Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. Now, again, I'm going to read several different versions of it to help us to get a grasp of what the word of God is saying to us. Because in this particular text is a principle that must take effect in your life in order to reap the harvest. In the case that the writer described here, the harvest would be some of the harvest would be 30 fold. Some of your harvest would be 60 fold and some of your harvest would be 100 fold. Now, a lot of us like to just skip to the harvest point, but you don't get that harvest unless you do what happened prior to the harvest. Somebody ought to give God praise. So let's back up a little bit. Let's take a look at what happened in order for the results to take place in the case of this scripture that we read today. And I want you to know that in order for whatever type of harvest that, that you will harvest, whether that be 60, 30 or 100 fold increase, you must apply this principle first. And so if you take a look at that text, he says, but he that receives seed into good ground. Now, the word but is a conjunction, which is connecting a previous thought to the current thought or the next thought. So in order for us to really understand the difference in the blessing that comes from meditating, from receiving the seed, which is the word of God, the same, same type of words that we're reading today that's inspired by God to you. So let's see what happens as opposed to those who did not receive the seed which was sown into good soil. And the good soil has to be your heart where you meditate upon the word that we're speaking to you even today. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit and we're going to understand this in context. So before we get to the whole harvesting season, which everybody loves to, 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 to partake in a harvest time, at least if it's a good harvest. Now you notice that in the whole context of this portion of scripture that we're reading today, everything is good. And, th and it's a result of the fact that the Lord is good. And that was our worship and praise song where we were, we were so uh, w wonderfully uh, taken before the presence and the throne of God through worship when we declared that the Lord, you are good. You are the living word. You are our daily bread. And because the Lord is good, everything that comes from him, you know what I'm about to say, is good. And so it says, but the seed sown on good soil is the one who hears the word and understands it and understands it. Now, prior to Jesus getting to that particular verse in verse 23, he had spoke to his disciples about those who did not receive the word on good soil. And it wasn't because the word wasn't good, because anything that comes from God is good because God is good. So there are two ways that people can receive the message of God. One way is that they can hear it, but they don't meditate it on their, in their hearts. Sometimes they may hear the word of God and they may allow the cares of this world to choke it out. So let's back up a little bit in this text to understand what this parable of the sower as Jesus explained it to his early disciples and I want us to understand it today by the power of the Holy Spirit because it's no good to receive a word that can produce life except you receive the word and allow it to produce life in you. That is to bring about that 30, that 60, in some cases that hundredfold increase. So back up to verse 22, Jesus was explaining to his disciples and I want to take this time now to explain to each and every one of you as we approach this season, this new calendar year, which the Lord has decreed and declared for those who are associated uh, with this ministry, that this is the year of the, our harvest. 
That means that you're going to reap in this season what you've sown in last season. Now, if you haven't sown anything in last season, then you can't expect to get a harvest from it. Or if you have sown, the word has been sown into your life, but you did not but you did not receive it and meditate on it, then your harvest will be limited or very scarce. For those of you who, who were not associated with this ministry and received the word from God on last year, then this year can start off by you planting the word of God in good soil. So here is verse 22, it says, but the seed sown among the thorns. He says that he went out to scatter his seed. And as he scattered his seed, which is the word of God, the same way the word of God is being spoken right now in the hearing of each and every person under the sound of my voice. The same way the word of God now is being broadcast, that is being scattered to every kindred, tongue, tribe, and nation. Some of these words will fall upon rocky soil. Some of it will fall upon thorns. Some will fall upon the path and people will walk on it. Some, the birds will come and eat it. And so as a result of where the seed went, in other words, depending on where the word of God went to, depending on the condition of your heart and your mind, whether you were able and ready to receive the, the, the principle, the life that is contained in the seed, which is the word of God, that 2017 is the year of our harvest. And we're going to look at the word harvest in a moment. So we can understand in context what our expectation should be and what God anticipates and expects for each and every one of us to receive. And how many of you know that God is going to reap a harvest from our efforts as well? And this is why he wants to aid us in bringing about that 30, some 60, some 100 fold increase because God wants to reap a harvest as well. Hallelujah. So after explaining that the word of God will fall upon different types of soil, the seed was good, which is the word of God, which is the word that I'm speaking to you today, is that this is the year of our harvest. It's a good word. It's a good seed. Now what happens next is going to depend upon the condition of your heart. It's going to depend on the condition of your mind. It's going to depend on whether you allow situations and circumstances to, 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 to choke out or to pluck away or to snatch away this word that this year, 2017, is the year of my harvest. I want you to say it again with me, saints of God. 2017, the year 2017 is the year of my harvest. It's going to be a good harvest. It's going to be good seed. My heart is going to be good soil to bring about some 30, some 60, some 100 fold increase into my life. So if we back up to the previous verses, we'll see how Jesus qualified those who would receive this type of harvest. For not every person who received the word of God would receive the same type of results. And so we must make sure that our hearts are prepared that we can be ones who can receive the word of the Lord today. Not just to hear the word of God because there are going to be many messages, some spoken in the name of the Lord, some not. But that's why I want you to be able to look at your scripture text in your own Bible to understand these things in context. Matthew 13, verse 23, and we're going to look at some preceding uh, verses to give it context. So let's start with verse number 18. Jesus is now going to explain what the parable of the sower meant. The parable of the one who sows the good seed. The parable of the one that speak forth the inspired word of God. He has spoken to them using figurative language about seed and four different types of soil. Now Jesus wants to explain it to his early disciples and the Holy Spirit today wants us to understand it as well because we don't get the results that God desires for us if we do not understand the word that the Lord is speaking. 
For in our foundational text, it says, though, the seed that fell on good soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. So here Jesus is going to give the explanation or try to bring the early disciples to an understanding so that they can receive the harvest that God intends for them to receive. And he wants the same thing to be true in each and every one of your lives. He doesn't want this just to be another feel-good, sound-good message. He wants this message to be good and to result in the good which he desires for your life. So in the New Living Translation, verse number 18 says, Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds today. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may my voice be used. May I be used as a farmer who's sowing the seed, which is the living word of God, into your life. It says in verse 19, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom, but don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. Verse 20, and I'm looking at the New Living Translation. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Verse 21. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear God's word but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. So notice something here, children of God. In each of these three occasions which Jesus explained the parable of the soil, each person received the word of God. Just like each and every one of you today is receiving the word of God. But saints of God, look what happened when the word of God, which is the good seed, fell on different types of soil. It says some soil had no root and it only remained for a season. And when trouble or persecution comes, they quickly fell away. Saints of God, I want you today, I know that the enemy is going to try to snatch this word from some of you today because his purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has declared to us in John 10:10 10, 10, that I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Someone says harvest. And so it's very important that we understand what the Lord explained to the early disciples so that if we find ourselves in this condition that we can now approach the throne of God to find grace to help us in our time of need. What a tragedy it would be if the doctor gave you medicine but you failed to follow the instructions. What a tragedy it would be if Jesus gave you the key to a new house but you refused to put it in the lock and open the door. And this is what it's like when we hear the word of God but we refuse to allow it to take root in our lives. When we allow the cares of this world to choke it. When we allow the enemy to come and snatch it away from us. This is what it's like, Jesus is saying. To receive your recipe for your breakthrough. But you refuse to add the necessary ingredients. Saints of God. As we are transitioned from this year, 2016, I don't know, this year may have been a great year for you. It's been a great year for me, and I praise God for it. But I believe that there are some seeds that were sown in 2016 that won't reap a harvest until 2017 in my life. And I'm expecting that good seed as I've been meditating upon this word, as I do not allow the cares of this world to choke it out, as I do not allow... Uh, the enemy to snatch it away as I do not allow my own situations and circumstances to take rulership over the word of God that I will reap in this year and I pray that some of you all of you each of you also reap in this year 2017 
your heart is some 30 fold, some 60, some 100 fold. Someone said to me, the Lord of the harvest. This is what Jesus is trying to get his early disciples to understand. And this is what I pray now about the power of the Holy Spirit that each and every one of you will understand also. Again, Jesus says, now listen to the, to the explanation of the parable about the farmer sowing seeds. And I want to say this again for you, Safe, because it needs to take root in your life. You need to meditate upon this word more than you meditate upon your problem or your situation if you're having problems. Even if you had successes, you need to meditate upon the word of God more than your success because the word of God is the reason for your success. He goes on to say again, the seed that fell on the footpath, or when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, which is what we must seek first, saints of God, and we must seek his righteousness. When we hear the word of the kingdom and we do not understand it, then the evil one comes and he snatches away what is sown in our hearts. You have to understand that whenever God speaks, saying that there's a kingdom of God that he wants to usher us into the kingdom. Jesus came proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. So the word is not a good word. It's not a good seed unless the message is about the kingdom of God, where God rules and reigns supreme, saints of God. And this is why a lot of times we receive what we think is the word of God, but the word is not related to the kingdom. It's related to our own selfish desires, our own selfish wants, our own selfish uh, uh, pleasures. But the, the message that is a good seed is a message about the kingdom. So I want you to understand that first and foremost, saints. And secondly, if you do not understand that, then the enemy, the evil one, will come and snatch away. He will snatch away the principle of the life that is in this word for you. That is, he will snatch away, he will kill, steal, and destroy this message from taking root in your life so that instead of reaping your 30, 60, and 100-fold increase of harvest, you will start to lose 30, 60, and 100-fold of your harvest. So this is why I want you to understand we're going to take a little time to teach this for a moment, saying, so God, so the seed that fell on rocky soil, what kind of soil is your heart and circumstance and situation now? Are you, do you find yourself as the one in verse number 18? Or 19, that is. Do you find yourself as the one who hears the message of the kingdom but do not understand it? If you find yourself there right now, saying to God, said, Lord, help my understanding. Help my understanding of the message of the kingdom so that the enemy will not come and snatch away this word which is being sown into my heart. Do not let this word fall upon the path where the enemy can snatch it away. Perhaps some of you listening to my voice now, you may find your heart as we read these scriptures, your, the condition of your heart may be like the rocky soil or the rocky ground, which represents those who hear the message and you immediately receive it with joy. That is, you, you want, when, I, when we said that some going to receive a 30, 60, 100 fold increase, you jumped up and you ran around the room, you might have cut cartwheels in the name of Jesus. That is the rocky soil. It represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But listen what happens. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word that they have received with joy, they quickly fall away. Is that where you find yourself? If it is, the so Lord strengthen me. Remove the rocks from my soil, O oh God. That when I receive this word with joy, that it may last for a long time. That when trouble or persecution comes against me because of the word that I receive with joy, that I will not quickly fall away because my my building my house on a solid rock. So saints, I want you to take a look as we look at these scriptures today. The third area that the word was received then, but did not produce the intended harvest was thorns. It says the seed falling among the thorns refers to those who again hears the word, but 
the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So you said you heard of three conditions that we talked about so far where good seed fell off. It says each person received the word of the kingdom, the message of the kingdom. Just as I pray today, each and every one of your ears are open by the Spirit of God to receive the message of the kingdom of God, which is God's rule and reign. God wants to rule and reign over your heart and your mind, over your soul, over your situations, over your circumstances. He wants to rule and reign over your problem. Hallelujah. He wants to rule and reign over your worries. He wants to rule and reign over those who, who despitefully use you and abuse you. Let God reign. This is the message of the kingdom that Jesus is speaking of. And the sowers were sowing this word. So you see the three conditions in which the word of God was received but did not produce the intended harvest. What is the intended harvest? We get back to our foundational text in Matthew chapter 13, verse 23. It says, but the seed falling on good soil is not falling upon the path, is not falling among the thorns, is not falling on rocky ground, but it's falling on good soil. And this is where the word will produce the intended results, saints of God. This is where your heart and your mind need to be prepared by removing the thorns, by getting it off the path and into the field, it's taking out the rocks out of your field. Pre preparation, I pray that this message today by the power of the Lord is used as preparation for some of you to prepare your soil to receive the message of the kingdom. For it says here in verse 23 of Matthew 13, but the seed, which is the word of God concerning the kingdom, the seed falling on good soil, which is the heart of those who hear it and receive it, it says, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone or anyone for that matter who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, some sixty or thirty times what was sown 2017 the year of our harvest saints of god so you see what's required in order for us to position ourselves or prepare our hearts to receive the intended harvest of the lord some 30 some 60 some 100 fold increase so seeing that jesus as our worship song says that he is the lord of the harvest and this is why to seeing that he is lord and that his kingdom rules and his kingdom reigns. He's Lord over 2017, just as he's Lord over every other year, time, and season of our life. And because he's Lord, he rules over it. And because he rules over it, he reigns over it. Because he reigns over it, he has the power to bring about the necessary harvest or the required harvest in our lives. Now, I want you to think about that for just a moment. I'm going to give you this other text as we prepare to close this out. Because now it's going to be time for us to, to, to as we allow in this word, as we go into this message, we, we may find ourselves at different places of the three previous types of soil that we described besides the good soil. If, there, if there's something being spoken to you now by the power of the Spirit, ask God to take you off the path. Take the word off the path so, so Satan won't steal it. If, you, if, 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 you're, if you're among the thorns, if this word is... Among the thorns, and, and every time you hear this word, you, you immediately start thinking about your problem or your situation that seems to be contrary to your harvest. You need to ask God to remove the thorns out of your life. If you're on rocky soil, and every time you want to believe God for something, that, 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 that every time you think that you want to do it, the things that you're worrying about, and then you try to do things in the wrong way, chasing after wealth, and that chokes the word out, then I want you to say, God, take that away from me. Take the thorns and take the rocks. Take me off the path and put me into a good soil. This is what's going to be required, saints of God, because there is no quick fix to our situations or problems, except they come through the Lord of the harvest, the one who has reserved all things for us, not from us, but has stored them up for us in the heavens so let's talk a little bit now about what the harvest is the lord expects to come into this world if you look at matthew chapter 9 now verse 38 and we're going to back up to verse 37 matthew 9 37 it says 
Then he, being Jesus, said to his disciples, and I pray that you are a follower of Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. He didn't say the harvest could be plentiful. He didn't say the harvest might be plentiful. He didn't say the, the harvest will be plentiful. He says the harvest is plentiful. I want you to know that everything that you believe in God for, everything that you're hoping God for, everything that you uh, desire of God is already here. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers, those who will share the word of the kingdom, those who will share the message of the kingdom so that people can hear the word of God, so that they can receive the word of God, so that they can understand the word of God and in turn receive the intended harvest that I want them to receive. He says, again, he's saying to some of us today, oh yes, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So here's what he asks us to do in verse 38. Let's ask as we transition from 2016 into 2017. Let's not just ask God for the harvest. Let's ask the Lord of the harvest, hallelujah, to send workers into the harvest. See, sometimes saints, God tests our motivation. God is testing our real true desire. Some of us want the harvest of the Lord, but we don't want the Lord himself. I pray today as we go into this new year, we understand that we sometimes we get it backwards. We put the cart before the horse, saints of God, but not in this season. Someone said 2017 is the year of our harvest. So again, verse 37 of Matthew 9, then he said to his disciples, which I pray that each and every one of you listening to my voice are, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Verse 38, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest. This is what makes 2017 the year of our harvest, saints of God, because we're going to ask the Lord of the harvest. We're not going to ask God for the harvest. He is Lord of the harvest already. He's already said that the harvest is plentiful. So we don't have to seek the harvest. The harvest is already here. What matters now, what we need to do now is are we going to be ones who receive our harvest in this season? Are we going to receive our harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold? In order to receive our harvest, we must receive, God must receive his harvest. So right now in the name of Jesus, saints, I know a lot of times we hear about harvest. We're talking about what God, what I'm going to receive. The Lord is saying to us, what is he going to receive from our efforts? What is he going to receive from our praise? What is he going to receive because of our work? What is he going to receive because of our worship? What is he going to receive? Oh, Lord, today I pray that as we transition from this year, that we get our minds off of us and keep our minds set on you. For if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself, God. You will reap a harvest from our efforts. You will reap a harvest from our praise. You will reap a harvest from our worship. Oh God, it's to you today, Father, that we come before your presence singing with joy and gladness in our heart. We, we magnify and exalt you for you alone are God. And you are the Lord of the harvest and we worship you on this day. We ask you now, now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and by the precious power of the Holy Spirit, Father, we know that you are Lord of the harvest. And so we come before your presence now, seeking your face, oh God, that you will send forth laborers into the harvest for you have declared already that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers the laborers are few oh god prepare my heart to receive this word today prepare me to play a part in your harvest season oh god and as i am used to help reap your harvest god you're going to reap my harvest some 30 some 60 some 100 fold back into my life oh god but father right now I petition you. I make supplications to you. I make requests unto you, Father, the Lord of the harvest, that you will send forth laborers into the harvest. How these laborers go forward based on the text that we read in Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, so that they can declare the word of the Lord, so that people can hear the word of God, that they can understand the word of God, for those who hear the message of the kingdom and understands it, these are the ones who will produce a crop yielding a hundred, 
some 60, some 30 times what is sown. 2017, the year of our harvest. Father, we thank you. We praise you today for the harvest. We thank you that you are Lord of the harvest. We thank you that the harvest is plentiful. And Father, we thank you today for listening to our petitions and supplications and requests, O oh God, that you will send forth more laborers to decree and declare the message of the kingdom of God, that you will open the hearts and minds and ears of those who hear the word, that it will fall on good soil, that they will receive it and understand it, and Father, that you will watch over your word to perform it in their lives, to bring about that 30, 60, or 100-fold increase. And we thank you today, Father, that you've given us a part in your kingdom. And we ascribe worth to you and declare that you are Lord, and you are Lord of the harvest. And 2017 is the year of our harvest. Come on, saints of God, let us bless and let us praise and worship the name of our Lord. Hallelujah.